We've got more than 6,000 schools here. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah, it's one of the biggest provinces. So I, I really would not be honest if I can say I have an impression, but what just the two schools confirms our ongoing challenges with infrastructure. We've taken ECD. We went to that ECD center. That's not the best place you can take your children to. And with ECDs, we want them inside communities. So that school is well placed because it's right inside the community. But you can see there's no space, the infrastructure, and it's going to be another ongoing challenge whilst we still have our own, going, own challenges with old schools like this one. It's illegal to have asbestos by law, but we're not able to replace them. All we can do is to paint and treat them in the meantime so they're not harmful to learners and hoping that with time we'll be able to do that. You can see that it's an old school, there's no space, we can't even put sports in field, you can see where we are, there's no playing area. So we have a major problem with infrastructure. It manifests itself in different ways. It's old schools that were built by apartheid, no staff room, no specialist rooms, uh, very few. Uh, ablutions. Uh, we're discussing with the MEC to say we have to see if we can add another block because the number of toilets we have does not match the number of learners. There are too many learners for the types of seats, number of seats. So it's a big problem. It's a big, big problem. Uh, so infrastructure, it confirms our ongoing challenges with infrastructure. We have limited resources, we have huge demands. Uh, uh, we have to deal with new settlements. In the meantime, we have to read, do a redress. These are apartheid schools, you can see these uh, uh, trains and there's nothing more, no specialist room, nothing. So we have to look at those, but in the meantime, which I am proud of about our officials, despite all that, our core business is learning and teaching. And the principals continue to promise me to say, it doesn't matter what. And uh, Premier Unklebe, I have not spoken to you. I was telling MEC Witty, from the reports I am getting, there's going to be a Natal surprise. You know, these other provinces, is not a surprise. We used to have a Limpopo <laughs> surprise where we discovered Limpopo is at the bottom, but it gives us the biggest number of meds uh, uh, intake and meds uh, uh, uptake and also the throughput. And it's a surprise. and surprise. So I'm very proud that our managers, despite all the difficulties, mm -hmm. because you can, we want to And it's because it is funds I want to put my university, but no masters, but no money, but fund And sometimes I get it. It helps me to 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 see as getting them to work in such environment. I mean, It's not the ideal place, but I can assure you, despite all the difficulties. Yes, many young students. It's not an easy job. Yeah, but just to see the people in line, I want to knock the corny black out as well. Now, we're going to have this kind of sale. So there's hand beside the car, beside the car, yeah. So in King, I go and go. We're back on the other side. And you see, in terms of people, so much business. In order to business, we're going to have to deal with seven. So I'm not mad at you. I'm mad at you. You see, we're not teaching. You see, the means by the self fund is. yeah, um, no, thank you for, for the question. Um, we are, um, in fact, all families that lost their documentation um, as a result of flood were assisted with documentation. We don't have a single family that doesn't have um, documentation, be they um, IDs, uh, birth certificates, um, all that information. Um, for the learners um, that are displaced, um, yes, we started, um, I think, three weeks ago with this program because a lot of parents were away f uh, for holiday and for festive season. So when they came back, we started in earnest to check um, which ones um, are far from their schools. And right now, um, the, the department has been assisting all the families um, to look for the schools um, where they are alternatively at the moment providing scholar transport so that they can be transported in fact this is what we did last year already because we couldn't find new yeah. schools we transported almost all the learners uh, 
using also our our fleets uh, of vehicles from the um, from the government uh, our cars where we couldn't get our cars uh, we even had lots of um, like Marisbeck and other schools that they helped us and we putting fuel um, on the cars so that learners can be transported back and forward. So that's the plan that is there at the moment. And, uh, and the minister was talking about 6,000 schools. We have more than 2.8 learners in the schools in KwaZulu Natal. And uh, we, we, we've been discussing with the MEC minister to start exploring maybe uh, with the pilot from this year the pre-registration, uh, because as the MEC is saying, it's very difficult that you would still find then that there are parents um, at the schools and the benches waiting um, to be enrolled because we did not know how many that. learners were going to be coming to schools. So we are now um, starting to see whether shouldn't we also start piloting so that we don't have the, the, the huge numbers of learners that are not placed even within um, uh, the, the stipulated time, as the MEC was saying. But uh, those are all the programs that uh, we put in place. Thank you. Um, ENCA, and then you, you will be next. Thank you. I have a question for the Minister. Um, yesterday we went back um, and visited Britainwood High School. It's one of the schools that you visited when we were here in April during the class. And Minister, nothing has been done. Um, the classrooms that were damaged are still damaged. And there's overcrowding at the school. We spoke to um, some parents there and they were raising their issues as to why is government dragging its feet in fixing the schools that were damaged by the floods because it's almost a year later. And I also have a question for the Premier. Um, Premier, we spoke to Satu yesterday, the union. Um, they were saying that um, funds have been, um, they don't have enough funds. The Department of Education does not have enough funds to hire teachers and fix the infrastructure because some of the funds have been redirected to other departments. Why are you taking money away from such a, a very important department? Okay, next question to you. Yes, my question is to the MPC and the Greenheads. With regards to the violence in schools, uh, in what has high in Phoenix, there was violence and school had to be closed and Phoenix High had to be closed and there was a case in Tuzuma where a learner stepped another learner. So just to ask a question, what have you done to ensure the safety of the learners and what progress have you made from those incidents? Okay. Um, my question is for the Premier. I think the Premier is speaking about piloting pre registration online. Online. Uh, online. Like online. And it is online. How is that going to go with the students that are in the outskirts of the world? Two more questions. Uh, colleagues, we need to wrap now. Yes. No more questions. Thank you very much. Let me see, Premier. Um, just, just uh, maybe on the one for funding, um, they, 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 if, if there's one thing that we do in KZN, the Department of Social Development, Education and Health, um, every time we get uh, budget cuts by the national government, those departments are not affected. We always make sure that we exclude them from budget cuts. And you would know that when there are budget cuts, every department must cut their budget. But we then take all other departments' monies and redirect it where there are cuts in, the, in, in these um, three major departments. So that's what we do. Of course, it's never enough, um, I must be honest with you, um, because again, it's the numbers that grow every year um, of learners, uh, but also the infrastructure, as the minister was talking about, um, that we still need the infrastructure. But one good thing in KZN, you would never find um, what you call um, the toilets we were talking about, the, 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 the bucket toilets or that kind of toilet systems we don't have. Right now we're working again because you'd find that even the might school, we don't have might schools, but you'd find that in the school where they've built a new structure, they will keep their new structure, old structure maybe as a, as a, as a storeroom. Um, but we've been saying to them, probably look at another form of a storeroom rather than keeping you know that old structure because the media would come there and they will say well you've got a, an old structure there so that's one um, thing we've been we've been um, dealing with um, right now when it comes to the sector of education um, I can't remember the other question um, from oh yes yeah the pre-registration you know uh, uh, um, 
in KZN, we have a very unique uh, problem because there's a lot of migration of communities. And as a result of that, you would, if you go maybe to Guamasu right now or to here Emlazi, you would find, even Phoenix, you would find that there are parents lining wanting registration. And we believe that perhaps it's about time that we explore. But we're not going to be only looking at the online as in like uh, internet. We're even exploring the, the, your WhatsApp and your other forms of, um, of registration. Of course, our pilot is going to be in the, in the areas where there is connectivity until we make sure. Of course, 90% um, of schools are connected, by the way, yeah. except that there are those that are still not connected. But in the main, 90% um, of schools have got connection. So we, we believe that if we could start, um, because it's, it's not going to help us to say every year you'll have learners that would lose like two weeks of school work because they're still trying to look for schools, either because they've migrated from one area to the other, or it's because we did not know that the, the results of that school have been so good that parents now want to all move to that other school. So we do have those challenges. Um, the MEC will take the last question and then, then we wrap. Thank you, MC. Yes, oh, thank you question. very much. On the issue of the Britain Watch, let me start by saying it's so unfortunate that uh, you have chosen to go to areas where we have even work going on and there was no one to respond on our behalf. The first thing to say there is we have given the mobile classrooms and again for renovation we are having it on tender stage. So unfortunately we are not there to defend uh, the, or to respond on behalf of, 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 of the department. Otherwise work is happening. And if we can go back and check data, a number of schools that were affected, something has happened. And we are still going to make sure that we fix our, our, our classrooms that were affected. That will be uh, the first one. Then the second one in the issue of incidents. Unfortunately, it's a societal matter. As the department, we are appealing to communities to come, clo to come closer to schools. If you can recall, before we start our exams, we were very loud on asking uh, communities to come and assist. Hence, we had the smooth uh, examination. Again, on areas like that one, we are appealing to parents again, to communities again, to make sure that they come closer to our schools so that our schools are a conducive environment for our learners to, 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 to learn. Thank you. You know, I just want to respond to the online issue because I think people get uncomfortable mm. with online, maybe because of what they perceive as challenges mm. in counting. Western Cape uses online, yeah. Northern Cape uses online, the Free State uses online, Gauteng and, I'm, and Pumalang. So Pumalang, I'm glad that most provinces are coming on board on the online registration. Because I can, uh, which I was telling you that when I was MEC, it will be up to much that parents mm. tell me kids have not been at school. Mm. I don't know where they are. I don't know whether these places are, mm -hmm. you don't have a sense of where the problems are. Problems. Western Cape, even by yesterday, they could accurately tell me that they still have to place 600 learners. So they know uh, which learners have applied even from their system. Mm. They know where they can send them to in terms of places. And, that, that, and that's the, the beauty of online. So it's not really mm. like inconveniencing parents, but to make sure that speedily we can mm. respond. So when Houghton says in 10 days time, I'll be done. They're working on the basis of data. They know that left with 500, whether they're unable to place them any further, because in some schools I said place them, they said, unless ministers say they must sit on each other's laps, there's no space. And that's why we're negotiating with churches, but online will be the best way to, to go around. So if parents in Houghton, in the squatter camps can do it, parents in rural areas will be able to do it. Mm. If they can do it in Northern Cape, in the deep mm. rural, I'm sure we can do it anyway. Uh, phones have really become the real mm. thing. And we, you do online, but you also do manual, but it gets loaded. So you allow uh, uh, parents to also submit if they can't uh, 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 do it online. But the main thing, it has to be loaded. You know how many learners have been placed. And as I said, I think this problem, it's, just as I said last time, one is one too many if a child has not been placed. Mm. 
But if, for instance, Gauteng has got 2.8 million learners, if they've been able to put 2.8 million learners, they were unable to have 1,500. You can't say the system is not working. It's working because 2.8 million kids are in the system, mm. so which means they've been successfully placed. There's this 1,500, as Premier may say, there's lots of immigration. Young people change places of residence, they change places of work, kids grow, and you can't predict accurately. That's why by December you need to have a sense of mm, what are the migration so patterns, what is loaded in your system, where the gaps are, so that you can even start ordering our mobiles or you mm. even start building for how they what they do already by september they knew what the problems were by mm. december they gave schools money to say we're giving you so much we're not going to deliver mobiles go and build spirit classrooms and you can do that if you really have an online system but if you are going to do it manually this is cut is it mm. as is cut is it i'm a I'm a I'm a to take note seven and nine because it's you, it's your children, it's not the grannies. What yeah. if grannies can it have a poor mama baban to one? Says Kuma no grannies. The mothers my are using phones to must apply, not the grannies. The grannies uh, they did it for you and uh, uh, we did it for you as uh, as our children. Science are manual nina yens any. Uh, online. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Minister. Thank you, Premier. Thank you, MEC. Thank you, colleagues. Um, this will be the end of our briefing.